Hello, good morning friends. Today I'm going to talk about a very, uh, very much in demand happening even across the world. Everybody says recession is coming, recession is forthcoming, we'll all be going to lose our jobs. A lot of people have already been laid off from companies. So a lot of this, uh, you know, news which has been coming, making us unrest, making us very, very uh, mentally unhappy. And we don't know what the future is going to look like. So in this context, I would like to, you know, put a small video on what we need to do so that we escape recession, we beat recession, we win over it. And also we see that how we can mitigate that. Okay, right. We will divide the occupations in the world into two halves, basically. One, IT. Another is non-IT. Let me talk about the IT first. The reason I'm talking about the IT folks is because the recruitment in this sector is huge. There's a huge amount of campus interviews which happen and there's a huge amount of uh, workforce which are employed across the world in the IT sector. But when it comes to layoff also, there's a huge amount of layoff from the IT sector itself. We have seen what happened during pre-COVID. When COVID has struck, a lot of people are laid off during this COVID era at the IT sector. So let's talk about what IT folks need to do during the recession, which is forthcoming 2023, as you have seen a lot of screenshots like this. Okay. Now, first and foremost, increase your qualification. Many of the graduates in IT are uh, engineering graduates who come into the company and they do a pretty decent job. But the thing is, the work keeps them occupied very well that they don't uh, further qualify themselves, further certify themselves, further specialize themselves. The world has become a very ruthless world, to be very frank with you. It is going to keep only people who are specialist in an area, not generalist. Mind you, not generalist. So specialist will be replaced by generalist. Now, how do you become specialist? When you are in a particular area of operations, be it software, okay, be it a platform, be it a particular ecosystem, you need to identify which area you want to specialize. There are a lot of areas in IT where you can actually certify yourself and become a master of that, become a subject matter expert, become a technological expert in that. I'm going to name a few things in that, which when certified, your position might be very strong That That is number one strategy. So let me talk about it a little more and then let me go to the second strategy. Okay. So the first strategy will, is try to qualify yourself more. In what are the areas which you can qualify as with the technology is concerned? We have four big areas in technology which rules the world. Okay. One is Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services is one of the most demanded technologies in the recent world because everybody, every company is moving their operations into cloud. You have a huge amount of demand there in the form of Amazon, AWS Connect, AWS Comprehend, and a lot of other technologies concerning you know, cloud migration, cloud securities, and then cloud maintenance. All those things are in very high demand as far as AWS is concerned. The second technology which I would name is the Salesforce. This is a CRM tool, a tool which onboards a client, make uh, makes uh, uh, the client uh, journeys pretty successful, gives dashboards to the customers, to the users, and sees that all the customer transactions are captured historically and provides them with a download. So salesforce.com is a very good tool for you to learn if you are interested in CRM package, right? Then we'll come to the workflow package, Pega. Pega is one of the world's leading workflow packages because it has developed specialization in domain also in every sphere. So Pega for insurance, Pega for banking, Pega for all other sectors and all. So the workflow of Pega is much more than just a workflow. Okay. So if you've got an aptitude to learn that particular thing and become a master Pega architect, Pega designer, whatever it is, you know, that is going to be in demand. That's a niche skill. Pega, Salesforce, AWS. Then there are other platform technologies like ServiceNow, like Azure. Okay. Then you have automation softwares. Lot of automations take place in this world to see that the users of the companies are having their life easy. So automation anywhere. Blue Prism. Right. In automation itself, you've got to qualify yourself in robotic process automation like RPA, intelligent automation hyper automation. These things have matured over a period of years. So if you are able to qualify in automation, Salesforce, Pega, 
uh, AWS, ServiceNow, Azure, these are a wide amount of Adobe for that matter. All these things, Microsoft um, technologies, you know, like FileNet, like, you know, SharePoint, all these things are extremely useful. So the bottom line is try to qualify and be a specialist in these areas if you are in an IT field. This will really make you a very specialist player in that market, in that place of operation and you will have very less chances of being laid off during recession or any of the challenges which come through during the world scenarios. The second strategy is develop multiple certifications and multiple technology certifications. See in India, we always uh, stick on to one, one, one technology and then we move to the management cadre. Okay? We don't have multiple technology concept in very many companies. I remember when I was in UK working for a client, my boss asked me to learn what are the technologies of the foreigners working in the IT department of the company. Because after we took over the IT department, we wanted to replace the foreign, foreigners with Indian staff. That is because we wanted to have a cheap labor. We wanted to reduce the cost, make it more cost efficient. When I started studying their technology expertise, it was astonishing for me to learn they were not just having double technologies as masters in the skill, but multiple technologies. To name a few, I'll say they were having AS400, they were having Java, they were having .NET, and they were having all the database knowledges. It was very difficult for us to replace one foreigner with one Indian. It was very, very difficult. So we had to virtually shadow four people with four technologies to map and replace one person. See the amount of indispensability the foreigners have created. This is a learning for foreigners. From that position, <clears throat> from that scenario, my boss started encouraging multiple technology certifications in our company and that became a huge success. The same thing is what I'm going to propagate here also. You may have to learn multiple technology in a company for you to survive so that you understand the complete ecosystem of the domain. Okay, So to understand that various phases of the value chain of any domain is going to be supported with multiple technologies. Not a single technology will always try to take care of the entire life cycle. So learning multiple technology. If you are a dot and toner, learn my mainframes. If you are a Java, learn AS400. Right? So have variety of certifications across technologies to see and understand how the entire ecosystem and the value chain works. This will make you more indispensable. Okay? This is the second thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Third, when you are in management line, we all in India try to select, uh, you know, promote people to the management line, but there's no standard qualification worth the name they have. So you need to now see that your role is certified with the qualification it demands, like PMP, okay, Prince 2, right? Then Safe Agile, then Scrum Master. All these are management tools to manage the projects. You need to learn this and not to talk about, you know, the Six Sigmas, okay? Try to have these certifications so that not only you do that for certifications, but you also start implementing those principles in your day-to-day -day operations. This will be not only beneficial for the company, but also upgrade your thought process in the way how you can match the principles in the book to the day-to-day -day operations in practicality. So, so my dear friends, the bottom line and the end message which I want to convey is increase your qualification. There are all the companies today where you're working have got uh, types with a lot of universities or they have got their own um, learning academy in the company itself. Try to subscribe to that. See that you select at least one qualification in a quarter to get certified. The more number of qualifications you increase, the better is the indispensability factor you will be trying to put as a footmark in your company. It is not that you have to diversify for your line. But you see that you'll be a specialist in your line and see that you'll learn 10% of other things which are happening around you. What exactly it sees in the entire technological architecture in the company. Okay. Then the fourth thing is the role of a business analyst. The role of a business analyst is very crucial for every project from a domain perspective because unless you understand the domain, your technology cannot be a good enabler for that. So when you are 
a business analyst try to get qualified in that particular domain especially if it is banking if it is insurance if it is wealth management if it is uh, uh, supply chain management try to get qualified in that domain and also see that you also undergo cbap which is a professional qualification for business analyst and the business analyst is a person who becomes an ambassador to the company to the client in fact by understanding the business and then he translates the business understanding to his developers for them to develop software solutions for the for the operations of the clients so try to see that this particular role is very very crucial from a project perspective because he is involved in every phase of the project right from requirements design development and build testing and uat and handoff okay so see that you get qualified in all these things make yourself certified in that so that you know you not only become a uh, operational guy but also become a certified and an experienced guy per se right now this being a part now let us go to the non it part in non it more often than not you are specialist in some area try to be a specialist in that particular area of operation in that particular industry in that particular competitive environment and see that you understand better that area of operation compared to others this is very important then coming back to soft skills which is the final part of my video you have to invariably develop soft skills at any cost we have been recruiting a lot of people in the it companies but unfortunately the communication skill is very pathetic okay their proactiveness is not there their involvement is not there because they are not able to communicate in a confident way so when you are coming to a recruitment see that you sharpen your soft skills what do you mean by sharpen your soft skills first thing is communication see that you communicate well communicate better communicate efficiently and communicate properly all these things will be put in place once you think that you know the communication of what you learn is presented in a very very confident way because you need to present what you are learning otherwise the people will not understand what your knowledge levels are this is very very critical in every industry irrespective of the type of industry or the or the industry verticals whatever it is so communication is very important for you to learn at the very beginning of your career so that this is the only thing which can articulate your knowledge articulate your thought process articulate your entire understanding to the client and convince them to get projects for you okay this is number one then the way you behave with your peer with your superiors with the client right third email etiquette email writing an email effectively very very important how do you communicate what challenges you are facing how do you communicate your accomplishments how do you ask for some needs and necessities from the client everything requires a very proper email drafting and sending it to the client the client more often than not because it's of a different culture in other geographies may not understand your english quite well but if you use a very simple language and to the point without beating around the bush your job is done okay so all this recession euro is being addressed by these type of methods all right so if you are able to develop certifications and soft skills in your respective areas you need not worry about recession the best of the lot will always be retained by the company the people who are generalist who do not have qualifications with the name who are not able to make a mark of themselves in the company will be forced to be victimized so awake arise and stop not till your goal is achieved okay my dear friends i hope this video was interesting and it is useful also in the forthcoming recession which they say which i think indian companies would not be actually so much impacted but then let us try to be cautious let us try to be alerted before the actual event happens so try to do out of these methods it will give you a world of benefit not only to escape from the present scenario but also in your career up building in your going up the ladder in your becoming something special in not only the company but also in the area of operation you are and okay wish you all the best if you like this video subscribe to my channel hit the bell button so that more and more people can be benefited out of it pass on this video to your friends and relatives okay and all the best for you can see you bye